Hey guys, Dello 304 here. Uh, some of you may remember this little computer. This is a Dell Optiplex 760 Ultra Small Form Factor. I got this as part of the Mega Unboxing. If you saw that video, you would know about this little computer. Well, turns out I did not get a power supply with it when I got the computer, so I had to order one online. And that finally came. It's right there. And we're going to be testing this machine to see if it does anything. The, according to the dude who sent it to me, he said it worked. So, yeah. One problem is it's missing a part. Like, okay, let me let me open this up here, and we'll take a look. So, you, as you can see, here's the inside. Um, there is supposed to be a blue shroud that goes from here to here. So, what I think I'm going to do, I'm looking at it right now, and I think I can probably just get like a piece of paper or something and make my own temporary shroud until I am able to buy another one and so I think that'll work out just fine. Not sure how much RAM that is, it's probably 2 gigs. This is an 80 gig hard drive that I stuck in. Uh, also sent to me by the same guy, so I'm just gonna kind of... There's no hard drive caddy either, so I'm just gonna kind of leave this in here and hope it does... Hope it's fine. So, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Here's the power supply. I finally got it in. This thing is a huge power supply. I mean, th we're talking, this is probably about the same size as maybe an Xbox 360 power supply. It's bigger than the ones for the Dell Precisions. It's like freaking huge. And let's see, 12 volts at 18 amps, 12 times 18. I can't, I'm not good at math, so let's go ahead and bring my phone into the situation. And we'll do 12 times 18, see how many watts that is. That's 216 watts. So it's, pr it's about a 210 watt power supply. So, yeah, there we are. It's a big ass power supply. And it uses this weird proprietary connector, which it looks like a uh, PCI Express connector. It really does. But uh, yeah, it plugs right into the back of here. And that's kind of how the reason they got this thing to be so small is that they, uh, they chose to make the power supply external, which I guess is good for repairability and stuff because you don't have to replace the power supply. Um, you know, if the power supply goes out, you can buy another one. But, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to get this thing hooked up. Here's the I.O. on the back. We have a case fan there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a little shroud out of paper before I start this. We have DVI, no VGA, which is actually kind of weird, which means I have to use my 1080p monitor with this thing temporarily, which is fine. We have five USB ports, Ethernet, parallel, serial, and two audio ports. Not bad for a little business system. It's got a Core 2 Duo. I'm not sure if I mentioned that before. But uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get this thing up and running. So let me let me hook it up and get it going. Welcome to Dello 304, where we do things you probably shouldn't. Regardless, I think this is slightly better than nothing at all. I found the actual shroud, like the actual real part, on eBay for about $3. So I'll probably end up getting that at some point, but this should do for now. Alright, let's try it. Aha! Ooh, it has a new BIOS. Let's go F2. Huh. Wow. I didn't know it had the new style Dell BIOS. Wow, it does. Holy crap. Okay. So, let's see here. Oh, it has 3 gigs of memory. Nice, nice. Core 2 Duo E6550 at 2.3 gigahertz. Dual core. Uh, 4 megs of L2 cache. That's not bad. DDR2 800 memory. Not bad. Let's see. We want AHCI SATA. We're going to have to reinstall an operating system, obviously. Nice. Let's see, system configuration. Hmm. Cool. Okay, let's see. System logs, let's check those. Keyboard error, chassis intrusion. Nothing too serious there. Alright, so let's apply. And these things use uh, the Dell lat Latitude style um, optical drives. We're going to stick a Windows 7 DVD in here and we're going to get this going. Okay, we're doing very well. 
I did not realize how new this computer was. I assume this thing was made around 2007, 8, something like that. Uh, the service tag's right up there, so I can go ahead and do a, a check on Dell.com, which is probably what I'm going to do. But we're installing Windows 7 Professional 64-bit. Since it does have 3 gigs of RAM, might upgrade that to 4, depending on if I have any uh, DDR2. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much DDR2 RAM I actually have, so we're going to. I'm going to check that. And I'm installing Windows 7, and this thing is going to be pretty sweet. I was thinking about running the Minecraft server off this thing, but after what happened last night, the server crashed on the Mac Pro. Um, someone did a huge block change with World Edit and kind of screwed it up. So I think I'm going to leave the server on the Mac Pro. It just seems to have a lot more RAM. It seems to be a lot more suited for this kind of thing. And actually, the server uses more than 4 gigs of RAM by itself. So this would not be a very good Minecraft server. But... I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with this machine, but I'm not going to get rid of it because it's like so freaking cool how small it is. I just need to figure out where to put it and what to do with it. But yeah, for now we're just going to get it up and running. Ladies and gentlemen, we've hit a snag. So I got this message, which I've actually never gotten before on any of my computers. It said that Windows cannot boot to this disk because your computer's hardware may not support it. It was like, please check your BIOS. Well, it's like, okay. Well, yeah, I changed the disk to AHCI, but it should work. So, um, you know, talked to my friends a little bit. They said that that also might mean that the ISO or the drive might be bad. So, I don't know. I tried it with another optical drive. Well, I'm trying it with a different optical drive now, as you can see. And we're going to see if that makes a difference. If that doesn't make a difference, I'll try a different disk. If that doesn't make a difference, I guess I'll try setting it back to, you know, legacy mode. But I don't want... I, I kind of want AHCI, but uh, whatever. We're, we're going to do what it takes to make this thing work. Well, it definitely was the AHCI setting that was doing it. Windows is installing just fine now. That's weird. Kind of disappointing. I kind of wanted to have it in AHCI mode, but whatever. It's just a traditional hard drive anyway, so it's not like it really matters. So, what we're going to do now, since I'm bored, we're going to take a look at this service tag, and we're going to. Um, go on Dell.com and see what the original system config was for this thing. Alright, so here's what we found. It was shipped very late in its life. It was shipped April 22nd, 2009. That is quite late. So anyway, let's go ahead and scroll down here and see what we can find. 160 gig hard drive, 7200 RPM, uh, you know, the power adapter, blah blah blah. Core Duo, that's weird. Uh, let's see here. Vista sticker. DVD software. Okay, it was shipped with 2 gigs of RAM originally. And. Oh, the CPU is different. It used to have an E7300, but it's now an E6550, so. This was obviously modified at some point in its life. So the RAM was upgraded, but the processor was downgraded. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Anyway, yeah, there it is. Yay, video driver. It's almost done. Alright, here's what we have for our Windows Experience Index. 5.8 for processor, 5.8 for RAM, 4.0 for graphics, 3.5 for gaming, <laughs> gaming, uh, and then a 5.7 for the hard drive, so that's not too bad. I mean, you know, whatever, it's WEI. Anyway, I got it set up. It's all good to go. It's running Windows 7 Professional Service Pack 1 now. As you can see here, we have a Core 2 Duo E6550, which isn't the original processor, obviously. But, uh, yeah, there you are. So I have the computer all set up. Not exactly sure what I'm going to do with it now. Um, you know, I have trouble finding uses for most of my computers, but this is a cool little system, so I'm going to keep it. But that is that. The setup of the Optiplex 760 is complete. And I'll see you guys in a different video.